Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 12 and today we've got two more games in the championship with St Johnston as we take on Fulham away at Craven Cottage and Leeds at McDermott Park as well. We might squeeze in a game against Rotherham away from home but I'm not entirely sure. There's lots to get through in today's episode. We'll find out our opponents in the FA Cup fourth round as well after we beat Cardiff in the last game, the last episode, which I'm still finding so amusing. And uh, also as well, I should say... Well, Cardiff fans, I'm finding it amusing because I played a weak inside in that game. I didn't expect it. I'm not saying your team's bad or anything. I'm just saying that, I mean, I kind of am. What I'm trying to say is, I mean, not really because it's in the game. What I'm trying to say, can I start again, please? Hey, what is going on, guys? And welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is pointless. You already know what I'm going to say. It's the exact same monologue as before. Yes, today, guys, we take on Fulham and Leeds, all right, in a championship. And maybe a game against Rotherham as well. And we find out our opponents to the up fourth round. I should have just gone with the first one and continued. But uh, yes, today, guys, we've got these games against Fulham and Leeds. And some more business in the transfer window as well. Um, I don't know whether McLean is going to leave. McCall is going to leave, which is great. Uh, of course, he got a bid in the last episode from... I can't remember. But he's going to go anyway. And uh, that's fine with me. He's the uh, only foreign player in our side right now. Of course, two are out on loan right now. But I don't know whether any of our players are going to leave. I feel like McLean is probably going to sign with someone because he's in such good form right now. And he can be poached away. But I'm not entirely sure. So let's just advance in the calendar and uh, see what we've got to do first. Player training. Player training is, is what we've got to do first. Exciting stuff. The training feature. A big headline feature for FIBA 16, which I care about quite a lot. That comes first. Oh, Old Man Barry's up to 65. That's good. And uh, we've just seen a player has been sold as well. McCall has indeed left for £60,000. Totally fine with me. And we've got another monthly scouting update from Jack as well. Got some tournament prize money. Uh, of course, this year, uh, the prize money doesn't go straight in your budget. It waits. It goes until uh, next season. Waits and goes until next season. It uh, stays uh, away from your budget until next season. But fair enough. We'll take the 85 grand anyway. And let's go ahead and take a look at Jack's scouting update. All right. So Duncan McCall is looking a bit worse. So we're going to go ahead and reject him. Uh, Aiden Stewart could be alright, but the overall's a little bit too low and the potential's not high enough in my opinion. I'm looking for the creme de la creme here and Lewis Peterson doesn't meet that criteria either. Douglas Mitchell, oh hello Douglas Mitchell. He's going to come into our team, 76-94 potential, 47-59 overall. Goalkeeper, easy to train, we'll take him. Douglas McKenzie could be alright, but I'm not too sure. Uh, John Campbell is pro. Oh no, six foot six. Hmm, that actually does interest me a little bit. We'll keep him for the time being. Uh, Patrick Murray's rubbish though, and I think Ewan Gray is quite good, actually. Quite good. We'll leave him in the uh, scouting for one month and wait to see what he looks after two months. And uh, yeah, so one more player to our academy, and we'll take it. Cheers, Jack. And so we are now going into the first game of today's episode here away at Craven Cottage, a lovely little stadium. Went there a couple of years ago at Millwall uh, to take on Fulham away from home in London. Uh, as you can see, we're at the table right now. We're one point behind both Villa and Norwich and a win in this game even a point technically could see us into the top two for the first time in quite some time we fell out of the automatic promotion places a while ago can we get back in today let's hope so so come on St Johnston I want to start off today's episode with a win let's get a big three points here and go back into the top two come on the boys all right, so away we go then, away from home. A chance to go back into the top two. We fluffed our lines the last time we had a chance at home against Norwich. This is our moment. This is our opportunity. So we need to get the win. Come on, the boys. Oh, good little tackle there by Wallspoon. A really good chance. Wallspoon storms forward. Still Wallspoon. Everyone's left him. Wallspoon surely puts it in off the post. 1-0 to St. Johnston. 18 minutes in. The perfect start. And David Wallspoon forces into the lead and maybe into the top two. Fulham surrendered possession through the middle of the park. Wotherspoon won it back and did all the work himself. Held off his man, stormed forward, and a great finish in off the far post, a cross button, and David Wotherspoon gets his second goal of the championship. 1-0 to St. Johnston. Is this the game? We go back into the automatic promotion places. Come on, the boys. Sutar finds Wotherspoon. Chance to whip it across the far post. That's a great delivery. And Tierney diving header. Oh, what a goal, Kieran Tierney. No, it's offside. It's offside. What a goal from Tierney. A diving header. But he was, well, he's well offside, isn't he? He's about a yard offside there. Definitely the right call. That was a brilliant diving header from the left back. Sadly, it won't count. So second half again. Still leading by a goal. Comfortable first half for us. Fulham barely got close to our penalty area, really. We look the stronger side right now. And can we get a second goal in the second half? Wilson's done well to win it back here and a chance already Olsen chips it into the middle might drop to McLean getting in great save by Button 
Old man Barry and Suta are had a seriously easy game. Fulham have done nothing so far, but now they could have a chance. Sonny Aluko on the ball, tries to get inside the area, finds a doy here down this left-hand side or right side for them. Great cross to the far post as well, and the header goes into the bottom corner. I mean, that was just so typical. Just said that Fulham have barely been close to our penalty area. They went for deep cross to the far post. It's headed in, and John Ruddy, I mean, should he do better? It's across him. It's very, very close to the goalkeeper there as uh, number 11. But I feel like Ruddy should do a little bit better to stand him up there and not go to the ground so quickly. Fulham back on level terms. That's their first attempt on goal and they've scored. Oh, Callas, what a storming run now. Tom Kearney on the ball. Old man Barry trying to keep up with the boy. And still Kearney, what a tackle. Old man Barry. Right, come on, boys. There's still time. Just over a quarter of an hour to go. Rob Hamels is off the bench to play alongside his brother. There's still a chance here for us to win this game. Easton inside towards Stevie, boy. Stevie through the gap towards Easton, down the right-hand side. Easton on the ball, takes it around his man, crosses the far post, looks for Hunter off the bench. Oh, what a header! Hunter comes off the bench to score with his first touch and make sure that surely now we're going on to get the win. Brilliant stuff. Good hold up down the right-hand side. Great cross to the far post. And Hunter heads it in off the post. And it's 2-1 to St. Johnston. Get in, George. One final chance for Fulham as we now enter stoppage time here. It's a doy on the ball. Stormy down left-hand side. Murray's trying to catch up here, but he's faked him. Plays it back towards Josebed. Cross deflected. Controlled. Still a chance for Fulham. Larnell Cole on the ball. What can he do? Gets himself inside. Sigurdsson tackled by Tierney. Still not clear. 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 It's 2-2. I don't believe it. In stoppage time with the final kick of the game. Larnell Cole has equalised for Fulham. Them. I don't believe it. I so badly tried to get it clear. Just couldn't do it. Ruddy did well to get a touch, but couldn't keep it out. It's 2-2, and I don't believe it. We're going to choke once again in a game which could send us into the top two. I don't believe it. And that's it as well. The referee's just blown for full time. And that will do it. I cannot believe it. I thought Hunter came off the bench to rescue us to three points. Instead, we throw it away with virtually the final kick of the game. That is absolutely sickening. The stats will show it was quite balanced. But to be honest, I thought we were the superior side. Despite Fulham dominating possession, you'll probably see by the highlights as well. Fulham's shots really weren't too meaningful other than the goals they scored. I thought we were on top in this game. And the fact we threw it away, I mean, that is just absolutely gutting. And I'll give man the match to the guy that scored their first goal as well. He scored the header and apparently lost minus one headers as well. Anyone know what that means? I don't even know. Please tell me that Rotherham beat Norwich. No, they drew and Villa beat Wolves as well, which means if we held on to the three points in that game, we would have gone into second place. Instead, Villa extend the gap at the top of the table to three points now, I think it is. And we still stay out of it by a point that is just I mean seriously it was like the final kick of the game boys come on and we just received some tournament prize money as well which means that we now know who will be facing in the fourth round of the FA Cup so I'm really really hopeful that we got ourselves a big draw to help with some uh, some some match tickets and whatnot that you get in this year's fee for the finance section or it's a league two club that we could possibly brush aside so let's find out who we've got in the next round of the FA Cup we will be facing in round four Fleetwood Town Hmm, okay, so that's that's a club we can definitely take on. They're in League One right now, Fleetwood. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take Fleetwood in the next round. That's uh, that's after the Leeds game, actually. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take Fleetwood. I, I think it's at home. Yeah, it is home as well. So I think that's a game we could definitely win. And we could be going through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. That would be amazing. Okay, so we're now moving into the second game of the episode. And what a game as well. We host Leeds here in Scotland in a third versus sixth clash. Both sides in the playoffs right now. And as you can see by the table as well, we're five points clear of them. We're only seven points clear of Reading and seventh who are outside the playoffs. If we lose this game, we'll start to feel like the teams below us can catch up and possibly make our position in the playoffs seem a lot less stable. But if we win the game, Game, we could go back into the top two so there could be a massive mix of emotions come the end of the game depending on what the result is so a huge huge game here we take on Leeds let's get the win let's not throw it away in stoppage time again though come on St Johnston let's get the three points I want a big victory here
It's Davidson to old man Barry, venturing forward past the halfway line. It's a day out for the old boy. Through the gap towards McLean. McLean through towards Kane. Chance here. Kane on the ball. Back towards Stevie Boy. Can he get there? Can he get there? Great save by Rob Green. And Kyle Bartley clears. Roof tackle by Sutine. A good chance here on the break here. Through towards McLean. Now towards Chris Kane, his strike partner. Come on, Kane. This is your moment. This is your moment. You need a goal, son. Oh, my goodness. What's happened to the kid? Seriously, that's a near post smash, which usually works out well. And this time, I couldn't even hit the target. I don't know what's happened. I really, really don't. Still tied at 0-0. 12 minutes to go before the break. I want a goal in this first start to settle some nerves. Come on, Wolverspoon through towards Craig. Now McLean on the ball. Back towards Murray Davidson, the skipper. Easton now through the gap towards Hamilton. Down the right-hand side. Good build-up here. 16-year-old gets inside. Well done, Rob Hamilton. Excellent run. And Rob Hamilton continues his run and goes for goal. Good save by Rob Green. Go on, old man Barry. That's yours. Douche. Well done. Barry is a rock in the air. Seriously, Kane on the ball. Rock in the air. I mean, not really. That's a foul. Referee, hang on a minute. Bartley just took down McLean off the ball. He just took him off the ball without the ball. That could be a, a straight red. Uh, McLean was storming forward for the free ball. Bartley took him down. That could be a straight red card. Referee, there you go. Cole Bartley is off. That's the second time a Leeds player has been sent off against us. Why did he do that? McLean ran in front of his man and Kyle Bartley just took him down. He literally was, oh, he was going for the ball. He took down McLean instead. I mean, that's a straight red card, definitely. I know it was accidental, but still. Kyle Bartley with a moment of madness there and a chance for us here with a free kick, which Craig will take. Craig on the ball, goes for goal. It's not a bad effort. Off the post by Craig and we can't turn in the rebound. Taylor gets it clear. Oh, so unlucky. Man, if we don't win this game, seriously, they're down to 10 men now. We've been the better side in this first half. Let's make this man advantage count. Rob Hamilton on the ball, gets inside the area, finds Stevie Boy. It spells to the right man. Stevie Boy off the post. Craig turning in, please. No, he couldn't control it. Come on, for Christ's sake. I mean, this is so frustrating. We've been a far better side in the first half. You know, there is no denying that at all. We've got a man advantage now. If we don't go on to win this game, I mean, it's a bold statement to make as there's so many games left, but I'm just going to come out and say it. I don't think we'll get promoted, you know, because you, you can't afford to throw away these sort of games and fail to get maximum points. You know, the Fulham game, we were seconds away, lost it in stoppage time, or drew it in stoppage time, I should say. And in this game as well, man advantage being a far better side. Oh, John Ruddy, what are you doing? Jesus, I like the kid, I really do. But every now and then he does something like that. And it's like, Esteban Dreer, is that you? Kane on the ball, through the gap towards McLean. Can he get there? Can he get there. No, 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 no. Oh, Rob Green! Rob Green's missed it! I thought John Ruddy's howler was bad. What was that? Rob Green misses the ball and Stevie Boy gets his 21st. Oh my word. Great little ball through by Chris Kane. I thought he overcooked it a little bit though, but Rob Green, I mean, he is known for making mistakes. Who said FIFA's not realistic, eh? What was he trying to do? Stevie Boy slides in. He catches nothing, just thin air, and McLean gets his 21st of the year. I'm clapping on the sidelines. It's an easy goal, but we deserved a bit of luck. We got it there. McLean puts us in front. Gets in. 1 0 to the St. Tees. Ruddy's kick is perfect and finds Murray Davidson, volleys on towards Alston and away goes to sub off the bench down the right hand side on a storming run here and away he goes, Taylor is not going to keep up here, Alston continues his run, great chance here, drills it into the centre, finds McLean, oh what a finish, Stevie McLean, absolutely fantastic, telling the fans to calm down because he's leading the way as we're surely going to the top two, brilliant cross from Alston off the bench and McLean on the volley, I mean 34 years old or not. This guy is our saviour. What a finish by the number nine and that will deliver the three points to St Johnston. We're returning to winning ways and Stevie's leading the way. And a late chance possibly to add a third goal as Hunter finds Wolverspoon but instead I think we'll put our foot on the ball here, play it all the way backwards to Sutar and we shall just control the ball for the final seconds. St Johnston may be going back into the top two. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, I deserved that. I just... Oh god. Here's the thing about this goal. Just before anyone thinks that I'm a moron, because I am, obviously. Here's what was going on there. I passed all back towards John Ruddy. I thought I'd just hold on to the ball for possession. And I just... I didn't mean to do that, but as I was taking my finger off the L1 button... Doing the no-touch dribble, I accidentally flicked my left thumb onto the left stick and therefore the pass which was designed for Sutar 
actually went into the back of the net. So that's my fault. I'm sorry. That was stupid. That's a clean sheet, which I've ruined. But it's okay because we're getting the win. I mean, if we don't get a win now, I think I might just kill myself. But it's okay. We got the three points. I mean, right. I'm glad, but Jesus Christ. Like, there were, ugh, I don't even know. That was so stupid. But listen, we've got the win, all right? Don't dwell on that. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Let's just erase that final 60 seconds from the video and forget it even happened. We got the win. Stevie Boy led the way with a brace. Excellent stuff. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Well, it was a thoroughly deserving win. Anyway, no doubt about that. 2-1 the scoreline. Should have been more, really. We had six shots on target. Probably should have scored one or two more, really. But uh, anyway, um, I'm annoyed at myself for throwing away that clean sheet later on. Obviously, it doesn't really matter, but... I mean, seriously, like, I was just thinking, just hold on to the ball, don't do anything silly, and I do that. Absolutely ridiculous. Man, the match to Stevie Boy once again, though, a 9.4 for our boy up top with the brace. The second goal is a lovely little volley as well. A brilliant finish. I just, I don't know what we'd do if we lost this guy. I really don't. He is just so important to this team, despite his age. But man, seriously, I am so, so annoyed at myself with that stupid own goal. I was just sitting there thinking, I'm fine, I'm fine, no need to panic, no need to panic. Couldn't have put on the ball, no need to do anything silly. I mean, seriously, I, I can't believe that. Like, as soon as my left thumb smacked that left stick, it was the worst time to do it as well as soon as I pressed the X button. That was typical, but forget all about it because this is what's more important. And Johnston, back into the top two for the first time in a while. We've overtaken Norwich and the boys from Carrow Road go into the playoffs as we go one point clear in them and leapfrog them. We're still three points behind Villa, but what a massive win that was. We're now eight points clear of seventh place Leeds, who we just beat as well. Well, a huge, huge three points. And that will end today's episode of Club and Country as well, guys. So a massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, despite that stupid own goal from me in the last game, then please do leave a like, as likes are, of course, much appreciated, and they really help the channel grow as well. Much love to you. Have a great Wednesday, everyone. Sincerely, uh, enjoy the Champions League football tonight as well. And I will see you for another episode of Club and Country. Hmm, when? I mean, obviously very soon, as I always say, but when should I upload the next episode? Tomorrow evening? Do you guys want one tomorrow evening? Smash the like button if you want an episode tomorrow evening, yeah? I'll upload one anyway. I'll see you tomorrow.